Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. And it brings me such great pleasure to introduce our guest today, Kavita Bird, who brings together spirituality, holistic healing, and whole systems planetary transformation with a focus on conscious evolution and sacred activism. She writes articles and books on these themes and collaborates with organizations working for their integration. Based for many years in South India at an ashram where the great sage Sri Ramana Maharshi taught Kavita has been practicing the teachings of non-dual spirituality, Avyaeda, Vedanta, and Zen Buddhism, along with her traditional as well as evolutionary approaches. She is craniosacral therapist, craniosacral biodynamics, with a background in teaching yoga as Sanyasin with the Sadhyananda Ashram for seven years a graduate of Princeton University with a BA in English literature and creative writing. Kavita is author to numerous articles on spiritual and holistic subjects, a book of poetry, love songs of the undivided, and two books on sacred activism, quantum co-creative revolution. We are all in this together and chronicle of tectonic year point of no return or returning to our true wholeness. Kavita has a vision for living in community for sacred activism and an inner and outer freedom coaching training project. She welcomes collaborations with these projects. For more information about her vision for a conscious community and a quantum hope creative polo movement, for personal and planetary evolution, you should see her shakticenter.blogspot.com, which we will have posted at the end and in the description area. So I welcome you, Kavita Bird. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's such a wonderful pleasure and a treat to have you because I know you don't do a lot of podcasts. So <laughs> we are blessed. We are grateful. And I just want to say that out loud to you. Thank you for saying yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So I, I, I just, I want to deep dive. I want to dive right into having a conversation about whole systems planetary transformation. Because we hear about the new earth or the new paradigm shift. But would you give us through your eyes what do you perceive that looking like? Hmm. Yes. Um, the 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 edge that um, that impassions me is is uh, how to bring inner transformation and outer transformation together. And very often we find that the people working on inner transformation, like spiritual people, holistic people, and so on. And the people working on outer transformation, like the activists or people working at political levels, they're, they're often in two different camps. Um, and uh, people working at the inner levels often think that the activists are wasting their time because they're not reaching the, the deepest root of, of, of transformation. And, um, and, so the, and so the same patterns will, will recur. And the people working at the outer levels think the people working at the inner levels are all woo woo la la la. <laughs> so 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 for me, it's it's really important to bring these two camps together. I mean, in our own selves to bring together our own work at the inner and outer levels, and also in the collective to see how these two levels are so interconnected, so interconnected as to be inseparable. And so we need to see the, them as complementary rather than in conflict or opposition or two different camps. So. Yeah, um, you know, 
it's 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 so amazing that when you talk about inner and outer, that can bring so many different dynamics. Because I think the yin yang. I also think about the medicine wheel of when we come together, the pieces and parts, and like that that inner transformation that you're talking about, or the inner meeting the outer. I always the the first thing that came to my mind was that that inner work that we have to do to prepare to meet the outer transformation that has to take place. So that if you don't see the value in, in, in self, if you don't see the worthiness in self, then how could you ever experience that inner transformation that allows you to step into your light and your truth and, and the love that you are and, and the powerfulness that comes from within and not external to us, not power over anybody, but but that that inner journey within that has us step into our truth that prepares us to be strong enough to to help transform that that outer or meet and balance that outer that needs to take place. What what are your what are your thoughts? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yes, because um, the power, our ultimate power, is our connection with our source. <laughs> with you could say the unifield. <laughs> the unified field of consciousness or god or goddess or the divine mother um at the source of creation the Tao, the great spirit however you want to call it our power comes from there our own inner connection with that source and actually it's the same source for all of us it manifests in different ways um our role in this transformation manifests in different ways. But the first thing is to get aligned with that source. And then it's like the point of orchestration. The source itself orchestrates all of us so that all of our actions come together and harmonize to bring in a, a world in harmony. So that's how I see it. So the work you do, I, I also find very, very fundamental to um, bring people into alignment with their own worth because we are all the divine. We're all an expression of the divine. And when we understand that, we're empowered not only in our individual lives, but to serve the whole because we're not, not only part of that, uh, we, we are that whole. Uh, I mean, with our linear thinking, it's hard for us to imagine that we can both be a tiny part of the whole and actually the whole itself, but actually we are both. And, as we move into holographic thinking, we realize how the part and the whole are, are actually one. <laughs> then you describe whole systems transformation. So there we are, we have that inner work that we've done and, and we've connected with source, we're, we're standing in our truth and we're, we're prepared. Would you describe the vision you have for like that, that that whole system's planetary change. What does that look like? What what are the mm. levels by which we would operate at? You know, um, we as human beings in a three D world tend to 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 focus on finite, very very small. But when you talk about whole systems planetary transformation, you're talking about the grand picture. And one mm. of the things I find as being in the human nature is that a lot of us tend to come in and we look at the, the cosmology in a very small way and not a grand way you know and we didn't come here to play small we didn't we didn't get birth here to go through everything that we went through to play small but yet a lot of times our, our vision is so small and so focused we can't see things on a grand scale what do you think? Yeah, and I totally agree and very, very beautifully said. Absolutely. Yeah, and as I said, we are the whole. We are the whole. And that's grand. That's big. That's infinite. And its potentials for manifestation are also infinite. So, yes, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah, so to explain what I mean by whole systems transformation, I have a model. Mm -hmm. uh, I call the spheres of co-creation. So uh, it, it, it's a representation of the different dimensions of our being, the different levels of our being, because we're not just the physical body. I mean, I think many people have seen the pictures of yogis 
and around and and emanating from the yogis are five bodies so there's not just the physical body there's the energetic body there's the emotional body the mental body and the spiritual body so all of us exist on these five different dimensions individually and we all also exist on collective dimensions as well social collectivities you know the our our countries and and our globe our planet and also cosmic dimensions as well so we we exist in all those different spheres <laughs> from the most subtle to the most manifest <laughs> so yeah. the this model of the spheres of co-creation if you can imagine it um it's like seven concentric circles or se it's, it's actually uh, three dimensional it's actually five dimensional uh, <clears throat> not just not just seven seven rings but seven spheres um yeah. uh, emanating from the core of pure spirit at the center of these seven spheres is is consciousness universal consciousness the unified field of consciousness from a quantum physics point of view from the spiritual point of view you can call it pure spirit or the Tao or god goddess or all these other names that the different religions and traditions use for it but whatever it is it's that one essence from which everything is created and to which everything returns continuously <laughs> continuously we're all being animated by that one essence and everything in creation is being animated by that one essence in this grand orchestration and we're always also returning to that it's in the background always so mm -hmm. um it, it the yeah so the center of the seven spheres is this the unified field or spirit or pure consciousness universal consciousness and then that radiates out from the subtlest levels to the most the, the most manifest concrete levels so um from consciousness consciousness radiates out as as subtle energy levels like the quantum fields um yes the the these um subtle energy currents that underlie the manifest world that underlie the the world that we see and the third level is mental formations many people know about morphogenetic fields that underlying the manifest world again are these mental fields um, um fields of intention and vision and cultural worldviews that we share and then we project project as 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 the world that we see around us <clears throat> so that outer world is underlain is uh, un, under we say informed from these subtler dimensions first the consciousness level the subtle energy level and the mental level and then and then the fourth sphere out is where the world comes into view you know the, the concrete forms yeah or visible forms perceptible forms nature this beautiful creation we have all around us the trees the plants the mountains the rivers and the, the evolution of these elements into the human form uh so it's us within this beautiful um orchestrated uh creation at the visible level and then the next sphere out is the economic level and that's how we human beings as part of this this system of nature as part of this larger ecology how we interact with the other elements in nature for our own uh survival and thriving and flourishing um and and then this the, the next sphere out is a socio-political sphere like what kinds of forms of governance do we use to make decisions um to to govern our yeah our social systems our collective decisions and then the last sphere out is planetary and cosmic so it's the whole earth within the larger cosmic context and including these larger patterns of cosmic evolution that we're part of here so what I see and what many people see today is that there's this raising of consciousness happening this this raising of the whole frequency of the whole field uh, uh that underlies this whole creation including us <laughs> so it's so 
it's like the whole field is being uplifted, upgraded in a way into a higher frequency. And that and it that ripples up, you know, from those deepest levels of consciousness, subtle energy, psyche, mental formations, our ecological systems, our economic systems, our social system, our global systems, <laughs> our place in the cosmos. All of those spheres are being shaken up, shaken up, transformed, uplifted. We're right in the midst of it, so it feels very shaky. <laughs> but something new wants to emerge. This higher vibration of consciousness is at, is moving there from the core, and uh, and it wants to manifest this new this new what people are calling five D Earth or this new Earth as a manifestation of that higher uh, frequency of consciousness. What I love about what you're saying is that as you're speaking, and I'm sitting here envisioning what you're you're describing, and really what you're talking about is a reawakening internal and the acknowledgement of source within us to reacquaint ourselves from that which is external to us, to reawaken to the balance of nature, not the 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 the, the ruling over nature, but the balance of nature and how we're part of that 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 natural setting how we're part of the symbiosis of nature and what it means to us and what we mean to nature and then if we can just really awaken to that which is around us then everything else really falls into place then we don't have to fight among the way that we think or how we govern because we will be so strongly connected to source that that which we vibrate as resonant and frequency frequency energetic beings that we are will really just ripple effect and impact the way it's supposed to in its collective consciousness and unity consciousness that's supposed to so tell me if I'm, I'm off base on this but this is what i'm this is what's like exploding in my mind when you're talking to it and it's just like then it's not a fight to to convince people to want to work a certain way but that they awaken to it and then that when that yeah. inner, the outer, and that symbiosis takes place with that realization and awakening and understanding, the vibration just raises and we all just become a part of something that's so beautiful and so collectively in balance that we can navigate yeah. our futures forward. Am, am I yeah. way off base with that, that thinking or... Uh, no, no, it's beautiful. I, I agree. Um, uh, uh, one, one thing that I feel, though, is, is um, some people make a, a, a division between the inner work and, and the outer work in the sense that there are, well, as I see it, uh, uh, first of all, let me come back to the spheres of co-creation. Because the spheres okay. of co-creation is not only an illustration of consciousness radiating out as all these levels of our being, but I also designed it to uh, function as a, as a collaborative platform. The people working or people and organizations working for transformation at all these levels to, mm -hmm. to be able to map into the model what they're doing, what their organization is doing. Say there are people working at the economic level for economic transformation, other people working at the ecological level for ecological transformation, other people working at those very deep core inner levels. Everybody okay. has a different focus, yeah. So the idea is the people that working working at all these different levels from the innermost to the outermost all have an important role. And so I would say, that even those people working at the outer levels, for instance, challenging the political systems now, I wouldn't call that fighting the political systems. Because whenever we say fight, you know, us okay. spiritual people, that's a negative thing. We shouldn't be against anything. And it's not against. But some people's role is really to expose what's going on, mm. uh, to, to expose the forces of darkness that are coming to a head now. Right. in very real political terms <laughs> and, and to expose them and to dismantle those structures and to help other people see what's happening at that level so they don't unwittingly comply with with dark forces um, uh, 
because they don't understand what's happening. So I think people working at those levels, even you know, at the levels of of um, exposing and dismantling the present political structures, as well as building the new structures in very practical terms, building new communities, building hubs of solidarity with, with an existing community. All of those levels are important as far as I'm concerned, both exposing the old, deconstructing the old, and building the new, building the new at outer levels, and building the new at inner levels. And nobody can spread themselves out at, over all those seven spheres. Wow. We each have our, 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 our unique kind of sphere that we're drawn to. That's part of our mission from this grander orchestration. It's primed into us. It's in our DNA, which sphere will be called to focus our energies. And, but I think it's so important that we see ourselves as, as all working together and that actually this bigger unified field is working through us at all those levels. So not to put those levels in opposition that the people working at the outer levels are, are fighting and they shouldn't be bothering with that because I think even when we as individuals work at the inner level, those of us who are focused primarily on, on um, jogging the change from the innermost plane, uh -huh. it has an effect on all the other planes. And some of those people, for instance, working at the political levels, challenging the system, exposing, they may not be consciously aware what they're being jogged by, <laughs> but they are right. being jogged by this higher consciousness that's trying to emerge through all of us so they may be very focused if they're lawyers for example or doctors they may be very focused on exposing what's been going on like that and and when i look at them i think they're very much moved by this same um force of transformation and consciousness that we are who are working more at the inner level so i try not to separate out any of the levels but rather help us see how if we respect each other's roles and levels of work, then all of those levels become much more powerful and the whole transformation is vastly accelerated. It's wonderful when, you, when you're talking, I, I just have this picture of the seed of life, flower of life, you know. Mm, it's, it's exactly it's, like that. Yes, just at its core, you know. And this is exactly the way we're supposed to be working. And it's a beautiful, beautiful reminder of where we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to be working. Because people will go, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Where do I expend my energy? And I think you just described it beautifully. Does this capture where a person could read more about this in your books? Would you, would you talk a little bit about your books? about the book, sorry. Yes, say? Um, yes about your books. Uh, yes, <laughs> okay. It, it's available, I think it's available on Amazon. <laughs> I haven't okay. checked lately because I got taken down. <laughs> A lot of my writing got taken down earlier okay. on. Or, uh, so, but it's well, called- Well, let me uh, rephrase that. If yeah. someone wanted to seek and, and learn more about what you're expressing, can they huh. contact you to get a hold of your books because you have a couple yeah, of books. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the best way is um to go to my website, the Shakti oh. Center. Shakti Center um, Shakti Center dot com. Uh, okay. uh, and there there are there there's a, a bio and in the bio it, it lists the books. So okay. I think there it might I'd even be a direct link to the books. <laughs> In any case, it, it would direct people to the books. And also there's a lot of information on the site itself about the spheres of co-creation and this vision for uniting personal and planetary transformation. So even on the website itself, I have uh, quite a few articles and a description of the vision. Uh, and by the way, now that you mentioned that, now that we've come to the website, uh, another part of my vision is is building physical communities on the ground that embody this this work 
mm. that embody this integration of personal and planetary healing and transformation where people are coming together on the ground and doing this together because i think we've gone so far in the direction of all community being virtual these days we we really need to come back to the ground back to the earth back to the ground and start um, embodying new models for society for the future that we want to go in i i so agree with you um and that's it's it's wonderful that you are emphasizing this because what's happening is that people are spending so much time with technology that some are literally socially inept. They 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 yeah. don't know how to interact with individuals. They don't know how to have common courtesy. Um, they don't know how to focus. They're losing their focus on being able to engage, engage in the conversation, hold interest, be inquisitive. Um, instead, the focus just goes right back on being in their own little world on the technology front of their phone or whatever the case might be in front of them. So I think that um, these communities are important. And the other piece of this is the collective wisdom that can be shared when we are working together. And um, I'm not surprised if you are standing in your truth in terms of what society should look like, um, how society can be shaped and everything. You're going against the grain of where, you know, the powers that be or the 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 industry decides where we're going to go. And that's another thing I just want to remind even our listeners right now is that we are individuals that have our own truth. And in our own truths, we have every right to stand in them. And in standing in our truths, you know, it may not be where the, the, the industry is telling us where to be, how to behave, how to act, and what it's defined as. And that's what's called free will. And yes. when you're called powerfully to share something, to say something, to do something, to be something, then stand in your truth. It's important. Yeah, That's where source is telling us to do. We get this calling. It's a longing in our hearts. And I say yes. this because I look at my own journey and, you know, I worked for corporate for, for 20 plus years and then did a 360 degree leaving corporate and deciding that my journey is going to look different. And it didn't fall under the standard, you know, basic rules of you, you, you grow up, you go to college, you get married, you have children, you work if you work or you stay home and that if you work and, and this is the way it has to be. No, it doesn't have to be that way. That, Many of us ignore the calling in our hearts. We ignore what our heart is longing for. And I say the heart because the heart is the aspect of you that goes beyond the boundaries of comfort. It always takes you outside of that comfort zone. The ego is like, I'm comfortable. I'm working here. This is my bubble. I'm going to operate in my bubble. And that's where I want to be. But the heart always has you grow beyond that in the uncomfortable zone to explore and to be adventurous and to, to, to engage in new things that you would never engage in typically. And that's why we call it a longing in our heart. That's where source mm -hmm. sits. And so when you feel called for something, I have found in my experience that you have to act on it. You have to act on it. Or otherwise what you do is you live a life where someone's dreaming who you should be and you trying to fulfill something that doesn't really exist because people's view of you changes constantly. So it's like chasing a dangling carrot. You're hoping to do what somebody else projects that you should be, but then do you ever really arrive? Because those views change. So I always say the saying, dream a beautiful dream or you will be drunk, which is if you don't hold the vision for yourself, and step into that vision fully with your whole heart, then you will spend your whole life fulfilling what other people perceive you to be and perceive you to do, and you will really never be happy. So now that I've gotten a little bit into my story, what are your thoughts? I just, I kind of switched gears on us completely. <laughs> uh, no, but I think, it, it, I think it's very, very important. Um, because, okay, in, t in terms of 
the model of the spheres of co-creation, one could say that when we're born into this world, we're mm -hmm. subjected to enormous um, uh, conditioning, conditioning, and that would be at the mental level, you know, the third sphere up, this mental level. And, and, and we're inculcated with a certain worldview, and, and to, in today's world, the worldview that everybody is inculcated with, uh, because it's gone global, is separation, competition, violence. I have to get to the top and, you know, the hell with everybody else. So the, 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 our, our view of the world is all around separation, conflict, competition, uh, ambition. And, <clears throat> and so that's why our, our collective world is, 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 in, um, is in a shambles, is in collapse right now. So, but that's what we're all um, uh, conditioned into uh, at the mental level uh, when we mm, step into this world. So most people, of course, go along with it up to a certain point, you know, and, and they do what they expect, what society has told them they should want to do, what should make them happy, what should impress other people. They go along with it to a certain point. And at a certain point, and I think this point is accelerating now mm -hmm. <laughs> because the system itself has reached its, its utter limit and it's collapsing. And then, and then people have to come, come much deeper in themselves to that core level again, that connection with consciousness, with spirit at the center of the spheres, out of that conditioned sphere and into their own truth. And their own truth is the truth of spirit, that all our own truths are guided by spirit. And at that point, everything shifts. At that point, they're really, oh, how do you say, they're, they're, they're being moved or they're being played by this larger symphony from source itself so even that longing of your heart is coming from something much deeper that connects you with the whole yeah yes would you be willing to share with me your journey on how you arrived at this various vision that you see because our spiritual journey is very significant as to what's brought forward it it, it says mm -hmm. a lot uh, it's a long story but i i think from the time i was very young and probably because my father was an advertising man i could see through the, <laughs> this whole this whole sham of people being conditioned and brainwashed into wanting things and 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 wanting status and position I could see that very early and I saw my father suffered. My father was a bright person, but he'd gotten co-opted into the advertising world. And I, it, yeah, I, I just found it so sad that somebody who could have given really beautiful gifts to the world was instead trying to manipulate people to buy this product and that product that they didn't even need in the first place. <laughs> and so... So luckily, I was exposed to that so early on that I knew I didn't want any part of it. Okay. <laughs> so so as, as soon as I finished college, you know, when, when I was little, I said, as soon as I finish my education, I'm out of here, <laughs> the U.S., where I was born. <laughs> and I did that. When I finished, I just worked for a few months. I went to Africa, actually, to Tanzania. Um, wow. Because I wanted to be actually in a socialist country, a, co a country where people were living close to the land, in harmony with nature, in harmony with each other, and, and a really caring society where everybody was taken care of because they recognized we're all one. And what's interesting is that the <clears throat> Tanzania at the time, it was um, implementing a policy called Ujamaa. It's uh -huh. the Swahili word for oneness <laughs> uh, wow. under President Julius Nereri, who was a beautiful, very spiritual man. Uh, so that was the beginning of, of um, my journey into oneness, you could say. But what uh -huh. I realized was, <laughs> while Africans have this in their hearts, uh, they're, they're, they're very connected with the land, with each other, with this sense I mean, they're it's like like in the west you know we're so 
wrapped up in our own little egos and our own ambition and our own power. And in in the African culture, I really felt there was a sense people belonged to the whole. You know, they could really they felt connected with the whole, both the nature and each other. And I went into villages where they hardly had anything to eat, you know, for weeks. And if I had some food with me, um, the the first person who who saw me would never say, "Oh, share," you know, "I'll have some." No, they gather the whole village, and however long it took to gather everyone, and everyone would sit in a circle, and they'd share whatever the food was equally. <laughs> it's so wow. so beautiful. Yeah. So it and and uh, and and it's interesting because. I loved I loved my time in Africa, but I could see I have a very busy mind. I'd been raised in New York. I had a college education. I had a very busy, inquisitive mind, and I didn't know how to make it quiet. <laughs> you know, and I could see uh -huh. the Africans around me. We'd be sitting in front of the because I stayed in villages. You know, we, we'd we'd sit in front of the mud huts. And uh -huh. I could see the stillness, the stillness and the centeredness in them. Um, and I could feel my own restlessness, my own restless mind. And I thought, well, how do I, how do, what do I do with that? <laughs> and then I started to think about India and coming to India because I knew that the way that you still a busy mind is through meditation. Of course, India is, is you know, the 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 um it's the oldest heritage in the world of, of yeah. that uh, uh, techniques to still the mind and come into contact with our deeper nature so and actually when i was in africa i was meeting people coming back overland from india at that time <laughs> and that really excited my my, my desire uh -huh. to go to india so eventually I went to India and I ended up becoming a Swami uh, um, for seven years. And now what the does last a Swami three... mean? And what, and, and what does a Swami do? And good for question. So a Swami is somebody who, uh, in theory, <laughs> um, has dedicated their life to the search for a deeper truth, for the ultimate meaning of life, you could say. So a Swami um, doesn't go the more conventional path of getting married, having a home, having children, having a nine to five job and all that. A Swami gives up all that. And then mm -hmm. either by joining an ashram or by wandering themselves or going into a cave. I mean, there's different varieties of Swamihood. Right. <laughs> um, but the point is, it's people whose whose main passion in life whose main calling in life is discovering the higher meaning of why we're here what are we who are we what are we doing here and what's our highest purpose so that and in my case i, I joined an ashram i joined a yoga ashram so we mm -hmm. did very intensive yoga practice meditation uh, chanting uh, every variety of, of spiritual practice you can imagine and we also served in the community we were trained to teach yoga so we went out and taught in schools and handicap centers and hospitals and delinquent centers and jails and everything. It, I love that life. I really yeah. love that life. For me, it was so fulfilling, both, you know, uh, working on our own, our own inner evolution. And at the same time, it spills over into the collective evolution. And it just seemed such a beautiful complementarity of inner and outer in our way of life, you know? inner evolution and outer service and it went together uh so i love that unfortunately it ended in a big scandal and that's when i discovered that there that it's almost as if certain religious traditions and practices and uh, institutions have served us as humanity up until a certain point and now there's a big change coming and that's why the the in so many religious institutions and spiritual institutions there are these scandals there are there, there are abuses that are uncovered and exposed and so on it's a bit like what's happening on the collective social scene right now 
that right. the authorities that we've been taken as as our leaders, as infallible leaders, actually are using their positions for their own profit, power, and often, um, uh, um, yeah, uh, abuse. Uh, a, a lot of power abuse is uh, taking place behind the scenes. So that was a big wake up call for me. And many of my fellow swamis were very discouraged, and they left the spiritual life altogether. They 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 went out, got married, and, and did the usual thing. But mm -hmm. I couldn't do that because my calling for this higher higher purpose was still so strong. But uh, as I encountered this situation again and again, that the present traditions had real flaws that were now coming to a head. A lot of it had to do with these patriarchal um, uh, power structures and that and and that the these lineages have been um, they've come through male minds, masculine perspectives and and male leaders for centuries and uh, and and the 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 structures were hierarchical, um, disempowering for students. And I just felt this is a big wake up call. It's time for the feminine to come in. It's time for uh, us to create new a new spiritual paradigm that empowers us from within, that doesn't rob us of the power and make a, give, a, give it away to an authority at the top, usually an alpha male. <laughs> yeah. And we later find we've been abused and used. Right. But, that, we take our own power back, our own connection with the divine, our own connection with source, and we create structures. This is why I think community is so important. We create spaces, sanctuaries, where we nurture that in each other. We nurture our connection with the divine um, in each other, and then it comes together in this beautiful collective orchestration, which is what we've been talking about earlier. Yeah. So, so for at least the last fifteen years, I've had this vision of a what I call the Shakti Center. It's a it's a community, a spiritual community, but um, guided by the spirit of the divine feminine, which is one of greater equality of the recognition of the divine within all of us, and then nurturing each other to find our role, uh, to find our own connection with the divine and then find our role in contributing to this larger transformation. I wanna thank you for holding this vision. And I, I wanna to appeal to those who might be listening. And um, if you're a woman out there in the leadership looking for the same thing in, in um, surrounding yourself for deeper consciousness and looking to establish the frameworks. Because I find that we, we, we have to build what we want. We have to Absolutely. build the framework that we want. Um, they're, they're no longer the, how, how do I want to say this? That trying to retrofit, you know, I guess some things can be retrofitted, but it, it, it really, it needs to, break down so that we can rebuild the framework of what we want. If you're not satisfied with something and you're coexisting in something, you know, trying to reshape it, reshape it when, when the ideas and the, and the foundations are already built on, on something that is in opposition of what you're looking for, you really need mm -hmm. to leave that alone and come back over and recreate your own foundation and recreate your own framework of what you feel is ideal. And if you want something more family oriented, if you want something more circle oriented, and let me not even family oriented, circle oriented. And I say circle oriented because when we sit in circle, no one's above you, no one's below you, no one's behind you, no one's in front of you. But we sit in circle and we might be all looking at that same uh, beautiful uh, crystal in the center, but we all see it our own way. And the beauty about sitting in circle is that we can contribute to getting to that center and it doesn't make anybody's other, any other way wrong or negate anybody exactly. other, negates anybody else's way, but that they're just different and it's okay to be different and all go to the center and that my success of achieving centeredness is your success and your exactly. success is somebody else's success right? That we, we can all be successful and we can share into 
the achievement of arriving into, into the center without belittling, demeaning, stepping on, um, you know, pushing somebody out of the way because it's got to be mine. It's got to be mine. And that we can share and and rise together. So I I really really um coming from an indigenous perspective because all, all of the teachings that I've had have been fundamentally indigenous from tribes of uh, my grandmother uh, from the Ojibwe Nation. I share with the Kiros and the Peru and and many other tribes. But that that's the one commonality is that we can sit in circle together. That. We don't subscribe to the hierarchical, you know, like I have to upstage you in order to be lifted up, you know, that we can be lifted up together. So I really mm -hmm. love your So mind. beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. So, oh my goodness, we're coming up on an hour. I can't believe <laughs> this time went by so fast. And I, this conversation has been so heartwarming and so lovely. Um, I guess what I want to ask you lastly is that what is it that you want people to walk away with when they think about the fact that you want a conscious evolution for whole systems, planetary transformation? What do you want them to walk away? With? What do you want them to remember most of all out of everything that we discussed? Mm. Uh, for me, uh, uh, an enthusiasm, uh, a passion to create these new communities. I would love people to to feel that to feel that passion and also uh, the courage and the strength which you emphasize so much for people to to move forward. You know, even if, even if it's uh, uncomfortable to move out of their comfort zone and to know they're being lifted by something. Um, um, more true, more fundamental. Our, our, our true nature, you know, our, our, our spirit, our shared spirit. So that they will be carried in this as they step forward. They will be carried into a new future. So I invite people to really start envisioning these new communities and stepping forward to create them. Thank you so, so much, Kavita Bird. How can people get in contact with you if they want to further this conversation or if they wanted to reach out to you? Because I know that you also have your project, um, your Inner Outer Freedom Coach training project also. So how can people reach you? Uh, my email is probably best. So that's um, kavitag25 at yahoo.com. I don't know how to put it on the put oh, it I'll on the chat. I'll put it in the description box yeah. then. I'll oh, put it in okay. the description of the, the podcast. Yeah. So yeah, people can just email me. Um and 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 my email is also on the website. So if they miss it on the chat, they can find it on the website. Yeah. Excellent. So I wanna thank you, Kavita Bird, your wisdom your thoughtfulness, your light, your beacon of being the ripple effect that needs to take place here. We thank you from the infinite way and we welcome you again if you ever want to come back <laughs> and continue the conversation. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and thank you for sharing a part of you that is so, so, so needed in this world. Uh, well, thank you, Analia. It's really been my pleasure. Uh, I'm so happy to have connected with the infinite way. I love it, bringing spiritually, spirituality and humanity together. Beautiful. It's what it's yeah. all about. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So thank you, fellow listeners. And um, this has been another episode of The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe and like us and share, 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 share the wisdom, share the knowledge any and everywhere you can. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Kavita Bird. Thank you. And take care, everybody. Bye-bye.